magnetism. This word has a mystical dimension to it, don't you think? Most scientists and physics students know about the effect of a magnetic field on a moving charge. But do they know what a magnetic field truly is? Do you? Let's find out together. Hi, and welcome to Physics Made Easy. First of all, a big shout out to our community. The channel has reached 30,000 subscribers this week, and we are about to reach the million views. Just wow. So thank you so much. This really encourages me. Okay, that said, let's dive into magnetism. First, we will talk about magnetic effects. Basically, the stuff you learn at school that tells you how a magnetic field can be generated and what it does. But at school, they don't really tell you what it is. To understand what a magnetic field truly is, we will need to visit a consequence of Einstein's special relativity, length's contraction. That will be the second section of this video. In the last section, we will click things together like pieces of a puzzle and discuss the true nature of magnetic fields. Are you ready? Let's begin. Imagine a cable with a flow of electrons moving downwards. The conventional current is therefore upwards. At any time t, the total density of charges in the cable is zero. There are as many positive charges than negative charges per unit volume, so the cable is electrically neutral. Now let's place a positive charge at rest to the right of the cable. Well, nothing happens. Of course, the cable is neutral, so there is no reason why little q should experience a force. Let's give charge little q some motion, downwards, with a velocity v parallel to the cable. To our surprise, the path of charge little q is not parallel to the cable. It appears to be pushed away by some kind of repulsive force. This is weird, because as an observer at rest, the cable is neutral. Why should little q experience such a force pushing it away from the cable? And that is where we can introduce the notion of magnetic field. You see, an electric current flowing in a cable generates a magnetic field around it. The direction of the magnetic field lines around the cable is found by applying the right hand corkscrew rule. The thumb represents the direction of the conventional current, and the fingers curling around the thumb represents the field lines of the magnetic field. In our example, at the level of charge little q, the magnetic field is going away from you, that is, into the page. So we have positive charge little q going downwards, and the magnetic field created by the current in the cable at the level of little q going into the page. Now, to find out what is the effect of that magnetic field on charge little q, we can use another hand rule. There are various hand rules designed for that purpose, and they are all equivalent. The one I use personally is with my right hand flattened out. The fingers represent the direction of the velocity of the moving charge. From the palm comes out the magnetic field. The thumb gives the direction of the magnetic force experienced by the moving charge. If the charge is negative, I just flip the result. By applying the rule to our example, the positive test charge moving downwards feels a force to the right, away from the cable. To calculate the magnitude of that force, you must multiply the charge by the cross product of the velocity vector with the magnetic field strength vector. Here, V and B are perpendicular. So the magnitude of the force is just Q multiplied by the product of the magnitudes of V and B. OK, that's what you've learned at school, and it works really well in describing what's happening. But this magnetic field seems to appear conveniently from nowhere, just like if it was added or even invented so that theory and observations could match. This was the situation at the end of the 19th century. At the time, Maxwell, a real genius by the way, managed to summarize into four equations everything that was known about electricity and magnetism. In other words, he unified electric and magnetic bundles into one single theory, electromagnetism. 
But still, this didn't explain why these equations worked. It didn't take long, though, for someone to figure it out. And that someone was Einstein, when he published his special theory of relativity. And that is when the mystery about the true nature of magnetic fields was lifted. Diving into the special theory of relativity is out of the scope of this video. We will look just at one specific consequence of this theory. Length contraction. Imagine a rectangular object with height, width and length. Someone, at rest, is watching that object and measures its dimensions. He calls the length L0. Now consider another situation with the same rectangular object. The difference here is that the observer is moving with a velocity v in a direction parallel to the length of the rectangular object. He also measures the length, and he calls it L. Special relativity states that the length L measured by the moving observer will be less than L0, the length measured by the observer at rest. As for the width and the height, these will remain the same for both observers because they are perpendicular to the moving observer's velocity. The value of L is L0 multiplied by the relativistic factor, which is square root of 1 minus the ratio v squared over c squared, where v is the speed of the moving observer and c the speed of light. In other words, the object appears thinner for a moving observer than for an observer at rest. To illustrate this, I took a photograph of this table under that tree, first by being at rest, and then when riding my bicycle. These are the pictures I got. When I was moving, the table and the tree appeared thinner. Of course, I strongly exaggerated the effect. Yeah, I can't ride my bicycle fast enough. But this is a real and quantifiable effect. I, I know this is weird, but that's how the universe works. Now, let's see what this length contraction effect has on our example with the cable and the test chart. A conducting cable is made of fixed metallic ions which are charged positively and located in a sea of free electrons charged negatively. The total amount of positive charges in the cable is Q+, plus, which is a product of the density of positive charges Rh+, plus, the cross-section of the cable A and the length of the cable L. For the total amount of negative charges, it's the same idea. Q minus is a product of Rho minus, A and L. The total charge of the cable is the sum of all the charges in the cable. And because the density of negative charges counters exactly the density of positive charges, the total charge of the cable is thus zero. Q plus plus Q minus equals zero. Because the cable is electrically neutral, it does not generate any electric field around it. Consequently, a positive test charge little q at rest next to the cable does not feel any electric force. Now, the positive test charge little q is moving with a constant velocity downwards. Let's position an observer moving at the same velocity as little q. By doing this, we are positioning the observer within a frame of reference which is moving. Consequently, in the perspective of the observer, it is the cable that is moving now, upwards. In this moving frame of reference, which is that also of little q, the positive charges in the cable are moving upwards. So, due to length contraction, the average distance between these charges is smaller. Thus, their density increases regarding the negatively charged electrons. These are still moving downwards, but at a slow pace. Under the moving observer's perspective, the average distance between the electrons is therefore larger. Thus, their density has decreased. To conclude, for the moving observer, the negative charge density decreases and the positive charge density increases. So, in his perspective, the cable appears positively charged and generates an electric field that pushes the test charge away. If you want, you can play around with this reasoning. With the hand rule, you know that if the positive test charge moved upwards instead of downwards, it would feel an attractive force. The positive charge density in the cable would increase, but the negative charge density in the cable would increase even more, leading to an overall negative charge in the cable, attracting the positive test charge little q. 
In the end, what we perceive as a magnetic field when being at rest is actually an electric field when observed from a moving frame of reference. That's what a magnetic field is. It's an electric field that can only be seen as such when observed from a moving frame of reference. The way that I see this is that magnetism is an emergent phenomenon. It emerges when you combine electrostatic and electrodynamic theories, classical ones, with special relativity. Some might say, yeah, but what about permanent magnets? Well, if you dive deep into the structure of a magnetic material, you realize that at the core, it is still electrical phenomena that are responsible for the magnetic properties of that material. You see, the spin on itself of electrons in a material give rise to electronic magnetic moments that just add up to form the macroscopic magnetic properties of that material. So, in all cases, magnetic fields are just an emergent phenomena. They are not fundamental. Still, the mathematical formalism that was developed before the nature of magnetic fields was understood is amazingly effective, and you should continue using it. Yeah, you definitely do not want to include relativistic concepts when studying the inducting components of an electrical circuit. That would make electrical engineering really rough to study. Instead, Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism works it all out for you. So, just use it. You see, even if you know now that magnetic fields are not truly fundamental, you should still consider them as being part of your reality, or at least use a model that does. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. More videos on electromagnetism are planned, but the scholar year is starting full blast for me with a lot of new students in real life. And to tell you the truth, I never had a month of September which is so busy. So please be patient. One solution for you not to miss the release of new videos is to stay tuned by liking, subscribing, commenting and smashing that notification bell. Doing so really encourages me in making new videos. In the meantime, I wish you the best, and I'll see you soon for the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao.